and Mo. And I want to start doing some 2020 in review videos. So the first video is going to be my most favorite and least favorite books of 2020. I read a total of 59 books in 2020 and some of them were really awesome and some of them really stunk. A lot of them were just good or that I really enjoyed, but these are my top favorite and my least favorite. So I'm going to start off with least favorite. I'm going to talk about each book a little bit and then I'm going to say like my most least favorite book. <laughs> oh god, this is going to be hard though for least favorite because there was three books that I really, really, really didn't like. Before I tell you about my top five least favorite books, here are four books that didn't make the cut but were still pretty bad. One is The Wild Places. This is billed as a travel log of Robert McFarlane going around England discovering the wild places, the places that are still untamed. There were many aspects of this book that I really loved and there were many aspects that were really interesting. It took me a long time to get through because it kind of just dragged on. I also thought that along with the pacing of the actual story of his travels, there was also a little bit of a pacing issue with the way that he incorporated history into each story. I would have liked to have seen that be a more smooth transition. My second honorable mention for least favorite book would be Something Wicked This Way Comes. I had heard about this book forever. It was supposed to be this amazing coming of age story. It was supposed to have a magical evil circus and it did have those things. It was those things, but it just wasn't as interesting or exciting or captivating as I thought it was going to be. My third honorable mention is Little House in the Suburbs. This is a sustainability and homesteading nonfiction book. It was just too cutesy. It didn't give you enough straightforward information. My fourth honorable mention for least favorite book is Basquiat. This one was a biography. It had a lot of interesting information in it. It just wasn't very well written. On to my top five least favorite books of 2020. My fifth least favorite book of 2020 is the Long-Legged Fly by James Salas. The reason that this one made the list is because it was just not what I was expecting. I had been wanting to read this book for many, many years, and I was excited to read a modern noir about New Orleans, but it was written by a white man. It features a black main character. I think it fell short in the interpretation of the experience of a black man, and I think it also fell short in the interpretation of New Orleans. I didn't feel like this person knew what he was talking about a lot of the time when writing. I think there are some great aspects to this book, and I will try some more James Salas books. The first chapter of this book is very shocking and gripping. Although I enjoyed this book, it was one of my least favorites because it was probably my most disappointing book. Another extremely disappointing book that I read in 2020 was Bill Bryson's Notes from a Small Island. I really enjoyed Bill Bryson. I have read a few of his books and I really like them, but this book was rude, mean, problematic, fat shaming, and just a big long slog of him complaining through his last trip to England. My next least favorite book was The Circus in the Woods by Bill Littlefield. I've had this one on my TBR for many, many years. It is a young adult novel set in Vermont and it has kind of a mystical edge, but overall this book was just not well written. It was very boring. This one was really disappointing because it did have a lot of potential. The story seemed like it could be extremely interesting. It just was not written in an interesting manner. My second least favorite book is also a young adult novel, The Old Country. This is another one that I've had for a long time. This is another one that I bought in Vermont many, many years ago. It follows a young girl who's transformed into the body of a fox. This book was, I think, meant to be like a fable or fairy tale type style, but it just beat the reader over the head with the ideas. It was another book where the story had a lot of potential and some of the imagery was really interesting and beautiful, but ultimately it was extremely preachy and I just didn't enjoy it. Finally, my least favorite book of 2020 was Eating Wildly. Again, I think all of these books suffered from a problem of being more disappointing than 
bad. I'm not going to say they're the worst books. I do think many of these books were not well written. I think this book was not well written. Sometimes it's going to be a poorly written book that I'm really really gonna love, but in this case it was a poorly written book that I not only didn't love but found to be quite offensive. I think Ava Chin had an extremely interesting life and a lot of struggles to deal with. Maybe this book was written prematurely. Maybe she has more work to do on the things that she needs to learn about herself, about foraging, and about writing. On to my favorite books of 2020. The honorable mentions go to Murder at the Vicarage by Agatha Christie. This was my first Miss Marple book and I listened to it on audio. It had a great reader. It was super funny and super fun and it definitely launched my Agatha Christie journey. My second honorable mention for favorite books of the year goes to Day World. Not only is this a modern classic sci-fi written in the 70s, but it was totally poignant for the year of lockdown. It revolves around a future where the earth is so overpopulated that people are only allowed to live for one day a week. So you have one day and the rest of the time you're put into a sort of stasis and you are woken up again on your normal day. So if you're a Monday person, you have every Monday. You do the normal things that you would do, get up, go to work, have a normal relationship, but you only get to live one day of the week. Day World is about someone who is a day breaker and he gets to live multiple days of the week. So it was a really interesting read for 2020 I think. It had a lot of really interesting sci-fi ideas and overall it was a lot of fun. I really want to read the next two books in the series. My third honorable mention for 2020 is Man in the Dark by Paul Auster. And I just really wasn't expecting to like this book because it does have to do with war and trauma and it does have some really graphic violence in it. I think that the shortness of this book and the way that it really got to the heart of the matter, the way that it played with alternate realities and alternate timelines was really interesting, something that I haven't seen done in the same way by Paul Auster before. And then my fourth honorable mention for favorite book of 2020 is Dune. Dune by Frank Herbert is probably one of my new favorite sci-fi books. I thought it was really interesting, I thought it was really compelling, I thought it was a slow burn, but to me it felt like very exciting at the same time. I don't know if I've ever read a book that like was so long and so drawn out and had so much to impart in each section and then felt like, oh my god, it's over already. Now on to my favorite books of 2020. My fifth favorite book of 2020 I read early in the year, it was called Loafing Down Long Island. This is a sort of travelogue, sort of memoir, where the author decides to walk from Manhattan to the tip of Long Island. It's almost a guidebook, it's, it's almost a philosophy book, it's almost a self-help book. Being a lover of walking, I really identified with it. Being a lover of New York in general and Long Island and the five boroughs, I really enjoyed it. My next favorite book of 2020 is Through a Glass Darkly. I don't know where I first picked this up. It's a British edition, but it's by a American author. It is in the vein of Agatha Christie. It is a golden age mystery novel, and this one gets in my top five because it was so surprising. It was so interesting. I'd never heard of this person before. I really loved the mystery. I didn't exactly know what to expect. It had a supernatural angle. I just think it was really interestingly written. It takes place in Manhattan. It takes place in um, the kind of tri-state area. It takes place on the Jersey Shore, which was a twist that I wasn't expecting that I really enjoyed. I can't wait to read more Helen McCloy. This one really inspired me to read more mystery authors authors that I had never read before, so hopefully I will get to that in 2021. My third favorite book of 2020 has to go to the first book of The Good Life by Scott and Helen Nearing. This one was really a life-changing book. It's about a young couple who moves to Vermont after becoming disillusioned with the modern world. They live a sustainable lifestyle, they live a cruelty-free lifestyle, they live a money-free lifestyle as much as possible, they build all their own houses, they dig their own well, 
grow their own food, ideas to live by, and some inspiration for a cruelty-free, society-free lifestyle. I'm excited to read the second book probably in 2021, but this was such a mind-blowing book that I felt that I couldn't read them right in a row. If you're interested in sustainability at all, if you're interested in non-conventional living, if you're interested in growing your own food or building your own homes, I would highly recommend this book. Down to the last two. This is a tough choice. These books are both modern classics and they're, they were both totally amazing. So I think my second favorite book of the year is going to go to Graham Greene's The Quiet American. I have read a couple of other Graham Greene books. I love Travels with My Aunt and I had always put off reading The Quiet American because it's a book about war, it's set during wartime, it's set in a war-torn country and I was just always nervous to read that. <clears throat> I think it's interesting that one honorable mention and one of my top favorite books of 2020 both have to do with war even though I've said over and over again I don't like books about war. What does that mean? I don't know. It's just such an amazing novel. It's compact, it's impactful, it's emotional, it's got a little bit of mystery to it, it's got a little bit of revenge, it's got a little bit of betrayal. It's just a really good modern classic. I love modern classics and if you feel the same way, I would highly recommend Graham Greene's The Quiet American. And then on to my favorite book of 2020. It's got to go to The Crying of Lot 49 by Thomas Pynchon. This was such a great novel. Uh, fabulism, magical realism, alternate reality, alternate history, the post office, secret societies. I cannot capture why I love this book so much. It was just such a good book. Again, very short, very interesting. I had no idea where it was going. My favorite book of the year. So let me know if you've ever read any of these books. If you haven't read any of them, just tell me your favorite book of the year. Thanks so much. Bye.